If you are sourcing with this app or tool or whatever you want to call it, you are losing money every single time that you go out. What's going on everybody? It is Manny and I am back with another video. I just wanted to take a moment to reach out to you folks and talk about sourcing. Specifically, I want to talk about the tools that we use to source faster, to source better, and source with more data. If you're starting this business with very little seed money and as you progress, you're very, very slowly building up your cash flow, I can certainly understand what it means to begin this business with a budget. And I think that that is a trap that so many of you are falling into. It's a trap! And I speak from experience because I, for way too long, was overcome with this fear of spending money back into my business. I went for months with my main sourcing app being the Amazon seller app and using my phone camera to actually do the scanning. But I wanna let you know that if you are using the Amazon Seller app to actually do your sourcing, you are losing money. Why you ask? Because it's not a sourcing app. The Amazon Seller app excels at things like product research and helping you to see if you're gated in a certain category or if that awesome textbook that you're ready to buy is something that Amazon is saying you can't sell. But in terms of actually giving you the data that you need to make an educated buying decision on a particular book or other items, it sucks. Let me explain myself. And I'm not using this video to push any one service over another, but I have to tell you this, the optimal way to source if you are a bookseller is with a dedicated database mode. Not only is it much faster, not only does it help you overcome those connectivity issues when you go into church or library basements and there's just no internet, but it just gives you more data. Let's put it this way. When you go out sourcing and you're using the Amazon seller app, what kind of data does it actually give you? It gives you the current sales rank. And how helpful is that? It really isn't. You're buying books that look like they're ranked three, four, five hundred thousand, 500,000. And what you don't know is that it's sold last week and it's on its way back up to 5 million. Now, the main issue that many newer sellers face or sellers that are very slow to build up capital to develop their businesses is that they just don't feel that they can afford a 35 or $45 database. I totally understand that, which is why I want you to think a different way. If you're using the Amazon seller app to do your sourcing, you're already on live mode. Live mode is not that expensive at all. Now, if you're looking at Scoutly, you're looking like $10 a month. Forget about it. Scout IQ has a relatively cheap offer as well, $14, $15, uh, somewhere in that ballpark. And there's many other sourcing apps out there, but those are, by consensus, the best ones for booksellers. If you go with one of those two, not only will you automatically uh, increase your speed dramatically because of the just the relative speed that they scan with and being able to use a barcode scanner with continuous scanning without stopping. But you're also paying for better data. Like I already said before, the Amazon seller app, it's just gonna give you the current sales rank. And as is often mentioned, the Amazon sales rank is really just a snapshot of where a book currently is. It doesn't tell you how long ago an item sold. It doesn't tell you how often that item is expected to sell in six months. And it doesn't tell you what the rank was before that. But with Scoutly or with Scout IQ, you're not only gonna get the current rank, you're also gonna get your uh, your days with sales. Scout IQ calls it eScore. It lets you know how many days in the last six months or so an item actually posted a sale. So you're able to compare the current rank with how often the software tells you the item has sold. Now with Scoutly, you're also able to get an average sales rank that is calculated over the last 12 months. And when you do a live scan, you also get an actual uh, sales rank history chart right on the main screen. So what I'm trying to say is that there are services out there that for very little money can actually speed up your sourcing and reduce the number of duds you're buying. I would actually tell you that if you went and you spent 10 to $15 on one of these live sourcing apps, you would actually save that money just in the number of duds that you're not bringing home. So without a doubt, 
positively the worst sourcing app that you could ever use for your Amazon FBA book business is the Amazon seller app because it's not a sourcing app. And I would also tell you that if you're going to go ahead and you're going to get that sourcing app, you may as well invest in a Bluetooth scanner. I already made a video about the YoYo 1D barcode scanner. I'm going to go ahead and post it in the YouTube card above for a $50 investment one time. It's well worth the money. And I'll bet you that the first time that you go out sourcing with your new sourcing app and your new barcode scanner, if you haven't done so before, you're going to feel like a superhero. I'm Batman. The amount of speed that you're going to pick up and all of that extra information is going to be so worth it. And it's actually going to help you build up your workflow. But here's the question of the day. When you began your Amazon FBA book business, did you begin using the Amazon seller app in your phone camera? Or did you begin by immediately investing in some of the tools that would speed you up? Go ahead and put in your comments below because I don't think everybody did it the way that I did. Well, that's all for today's video, folks. If you enjoyed this video and you want me to see me make more videos like this one, please remember to share, like, and subscribe to support the channel. If you haven't already liked this video, go ahead and smash that like button. And if you're not subscribed yet, tap on that book bag right there. And while you're in there, make sure you turn on those bell notifications so that YouTube tells you every time I drop a new video. Until next time, let's go make some money.